<laughs> and every now and again we just get that rogue wave that comes all the way up. I'm soaked. I think this is the fun of it though, isn't it? Morning guys, welcome to this week's vlog. It's, uh, it's a bit of a mishmash, if I'm perfectly honest. I'm at Steepley Pier in Hartley Pool, which is in Northumberland on the northeast coast of England, just in case you didn't know. And I'm here, well, to shoot the pier. Um, bit of a mishmash though, because I came here last night for sunset. I didn't do much vlogging because I just arrived pretty much as the sun was dipping down and I wanted to rush around and grab some shots. Also, I had a bit of a major incident last night, which is a bit of a pain. All those shots I took last night, I'll combine them in this vlog today. So you're gonna get a sunset, sunrise vlog this week. If you can see me through this damn sea fret that I always seem to attract every time I go photographing on the northeast coast of England and hear me over these damn waves, I'm about to introduce you to Steetley Pier in Northumberland. Stop the video right now. I've had a disaster. Uh, uh, I've had a major, major disaster. Now I'm trying to put more work into my productions, which means I tend to arrive earlier, I tend to leave later, I include more B-roll, I'm trying to up my game in post-production. Anyway, you get the message. So let me tell you the tale. On Monday I arrived in the Northeast and I arrived in plenty of time because I wanted to do a sunset shot, which this is what I never do. I wanted to do a sunset shot and then stay overnight and then do a sunrise shot in the morning and make two separate vlogs. So I'm all pumped up, I'm all excited. And for once, the weather was pretty much in my favor. I arrived at Steetley Pier. Um, you've seen some of the B-roll that I've taken. I'm sure you agree, it's a beautiful place. I'm sure lots of you have actually been there and photographed it. Anyway. Laddie daddy da. I started taking some B-roll, started taking some, you know, the typical walking shots and so on and so forth, and everything was going fine. Grabbed me drone, flew me drone out, right to the end of the pier and back, spun it round the pier, did all sorts of fancy stuff, came back, some nice aerial shots, some nice overhead shots. So far, so good. I then decided in my infinite wisdom to actually fly the drone along the water's edge, not out to sea, but along the water's edge. So keeping it all fairly safe at this point. But I wanted to fly it under the pier. Now don't get me wrong, the pier is not a two foot square area to fly through. It's quite vast and the stanchions, there's a lot of gap between them anyway. So I flew it nice and safe. As I started to fly it, I made sure I stood on the edge of the water as well. So I'm looking straight down the line to make sure there's no issues at all with it flying slowly under the pier all of a sudden i'm flying i just arrived at the pier there was a zzz, and it dropped like well like a sack of stones straight in the water and at this point as you can imagine it's a thousand pound drone panic sets in and um, oh by the way don't do this i know it's only in two feet of water but the waves were quite quite horrendous so like a burk <laughs> I, I just run straight into the ocean now don't get me wrong you know it, it, it's august so the weather the weather's not bad the the, the the water's not exactly freezing cold i'm not going to die of hypothermia within 30 seconds but like a burk i run straight into exactly the point where i saw it drop into the washer water and i'm I'm scurrying around and the waves were coming up and I'm absolutely drenched right through. I didn't film it, unfortunately, but uh, what an absolute disaster. Anyway, long story short. It 
it's gone it's gone it's gone it's gone and to make it worse that's the second one in 12 months suffice to say the wife's not happy <laughs> Oh, the nightmare! Has that ever happened to you? So all those beautiful B-roll shots... Target through my composition, and the sea is coming right up at this present moment in time. I've got some old metal railings, obviously, some support at some, some point. I've got that as a leading line, uh, complementing that with a leading line, obviously, of the pier going all the way out. I'm on the left hand side of the pier, which is probably a little bit unusual because most people. I'm guessing we'll probably take the shot from the right hand side simply because the pier moves up and then edges out from the right. Look, 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 look. <laughs> so I'm on the left hand side, which is probably a little bit unusual, but um, the reason why I've done that is because the sun is rising over on the right hand side of the pier, just over there somewhere. But uh, unfortunately, the sun is now up. It's 10 minutes after sunrise, but uh, apart from a nice blue sky, and, uh, a couple of orangey pink hues still remaining in the sky, but that's it really, unfortunately. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and every now and again, we just get that rogue wave that comes all the way up. Oh, very sadly, that's it. That's the only problem sometimes with sunrise shots. Is it's like, depending on the light, you could quite literally be done in 10 minutes, uh, which is nice, but it can also be quite frustrating because the potential here is absolutely huge. I've, I'm still only on the one side of the pier, um, and as you can see across there now, it's literally 13 or 15 minutes after sunrise and that's it, I can't do any more. The sun is above the horizon, it's breaking that cloud line and that's it, finished. Two hour journey up, it's been quite literally 15 or 20 minute work. I think I've got one or two nice shots though but uh, I'm wet. <laughs> I don't just want to finish yet. To extend my shooting time, what I've decided to do is actually come to the right-hand side of the pier. The sun is up, but it's actually, it's so bright now, I'm struggling to look into this camera. I certainly can't see myself on that screen. But what I've done now is I've come to the right-hand side knowing that the right-hand side of the pier will be lit up by that sun. So all I'm gonna do is aim away from the sun without stating the obvious, shield myself on this screen here when I actually physically take a picture. And with my settings at F11 at ISO 100, I've managed with my 10 stopper on there to create a 30 second exposure. And that's quite interesting. My composition, we've got some, uh, I don't know what they are, holes sticking up in the water, shall we say. Obviously supports at some point, probably from a, a really old pier. We're using those as foreground interest. I really, I want to get closer to them, but I can't because obviously these waves are coming up and every now and again there's a rogue wave that comes up all the way up and I have to rush onto the bank. So it's been a bit of a challenge this shoot. So 
desperate to extend my shooting time that I'm hunting around looking for different compositions and I, I know this is nothing new you could tell by the actual wear and tear on the floor that this is probably an iconic shot to take uh, I haven't done any research online I'm guessing maybe everybody takes this shot I'm not really sure but I'm right on the end of the pier I've zoomed quite in quite a distance you can see a gap um, as you've probably seen in some of the pictures earlier on there's a gap about a third of the way up the pier so I'm trying to zoom in there it's about 100 mil 105 mil and use that as part of my uh, leading lines and I just think it looks quite nice uh, it's really central it's got the horizon on the bottom third two-thirds sky because that sky at the moment is delightful so the worst case scenario at this present moment in time this would make for a really nice grungy black and white and I really like it so my settings in camera ISO 100 f11 is pretty standard and my shutter speed is at a 30 second exposure with my 10 stopper in there I'm not discovering anything new here absolutely not but uh, while you're here why not shoot it I do like it I think this will be quite nice and I might even opt for a a different perspective and try and get as low down on this pier as I possibly can. You can't actually get onto the pier, well, you might be able to if you're young and fit and healthy, but, <laughs> but obviously, clearly I'm not going to get on that pier. I forgot to mention um, the reasons why my drone crashed. <laughs> On closer inspection, uh, and obviously when the tide went out, the, um, I realized that where the drone had actually flown under the pier, there was a very small cord just hanging down, a very small cord, very thin um, piece of wire that was hanging down from the top of the pier. And Obviously, it's too small to be detected by the anti-collision stuff that's built into the, the Mavic Pro. And, um, and obviously, I couldn't see it. And I was only, I don't know, 20, 30 feet away, that's all. And I couldn't see it either. So that's the reason why. It simply must have just hit, tangled, and then just crashed like a sack of spuds straight into the ocean. And that's it. Uh, also, um, I, I stayed for about four hours for the, the, the sea to go out, the tide to go out. And I was looking and looking and looking and even worse still, so if you imagine now, I've gone home, broken the news to the wife. Uh, yeah, she wasn't best pleased if I'm perfectly honest because it's the second one in 12 months. And um, we even then went out for a meal and at one o'clock in the morning at the tide's lowest point, we both went back to Stately Pier. God knows what we must have looked like for any strangers that were walking by. The two of us with torches on, we, we just basically scoured the whole place. So if anybody comes across a Mavic Pro while you're walking around that area, then um, uh, it's mine. I wouldn't mind my card back, but uh, anyway, there you go. And, and, and let me just justify very quickly. The reason why I lost my first drone, well, I haven't strictly lost it as such, but I was flying it through a canyon um, in the Isle of Skye. You wanna say a canyon between the mountains and it looked really nice, did a nice sweep. Um, but then it went out of range like they normally do. So I pressed my return to home button. Now, I think I can safely assume that some eight or nine months later that it's probably never gonna come home, but uh, that's lost as well. 